welcome back. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, I'm Naomi. Uh, and as the name Sonao may explain, I'm all about sewing here on my channel. Uh, today, I have something very exciting to start sharing with you. So um, I am going to be collaborating with The Rag Shop in Warrington. Uh, Steph reached out looking for YouTubers who uh, could create a video and collaborate using her fabric. And I jumped at the chance because I love Steph's collection. Um, I am actually wearing one of my uh, my first purchase ever from the rag shop, which is this lovely viscose lawn. I love the sailboats and it's a uh, Coco Wawa plum dress with a little bit of red um, piping along the bottom but I absolutely love this this dress goes into the wash comes out again gets worn, <laughs> just gets worn constantly it's such a fantastic summer dress and such a lovely lightweight fabric um I did some even covered some red buttons to match on the back but I love this dress uh so when Steph offered some fabric to make something to share i was very excited and then i got a little bit delayed because we had some family stuff going on and um i had to wait a little bit so i was itching to get started but what i did do was plan um so i decided that this summer i really wanted to start drafting my own patterns again um, i haven't drafted anything in quite a while and i had an idea in my head of a a sundress that I wanted. I saw some um, different dresses. There was one in particular, a H&M dress, which I'll just show a picture here of, that I really, really liked. Um, and so like some of the details of it and some of it didn't work. So I wanted to make my own. Uh, so then I had the lovely, lovely job of looking through Steph's fabrics and choosing the right one. So I spotted this fabric and I thought I loved the colours in it but I also loved the kind of feel of what the dress would look like so I've chosen this beautiful uh you can see there this beautiful viscose linen linen viscose um now you can see the print there that it has these lovely flowers and it's kind of like a yellow and orange and red flower which is quite a nice vintage feel I think. Um, I love the white summery kind of crispness of it but also I've used um, linen viscose before and it has had more viscose than linen um, and it's quite light. This is actually more slightly more linen than viscose and it has a nice weight to it so it's I needed something with a little bit of structure and this has that lovely structure but also lovely and light and airy for a summer sundress. So this lovely fabric is going to become my self-drafted sundress. So just to add that this fabric um, on the website I've checked and there isn't a lot of this one left but there is another colourway, a more muted um flower on this and there is plenty of that in stock if you want to check it out but this is yeah check it out on the website so my plan is to show you how i designed the dress um how i created the pattern um then i will show you how i made the toile but not in great detail because i will actually do another video on the sewing of the dress um and then i'll take you through how i fitted it and adjusted my pattern and then, as I say, in my second video, I will actually take you through the making of the dress, so all the details and how to make all those um, little details in the dress. So this is an image of the dress that was the initial inspiration. And the things I love about the dress are the big bow on the back um, and then the kind of open back a little bit. Um, and then from the front, I love um, the ruffles along the the straps um, but there are some things I would do differently so I'm going to take this as my inspiration and take it into drawings. So this is a drawing of the dress I've planned so far and it might change 
and this is a, a flat drawing so these are kind of like the drawings that you see on the back of a passion and they are um kind of how the clothes would look if they were laid out flat so they they not draped on the body um so you can see the front here we've got princess seams and gathered skirt and then i'm going to have like a wider strap because i find it more comfortable and um this kind of ruffle which will be like a curved c-shaped piece that will be gathered um and, and on attached onto that strap and then also inseam pockets because there's quite a bit going on with this i don't want to put patch pockets on the front i think i'll go with inseam pockets and again this might change as i go and this is the whole thing about drafting yourself is that you kind of see how it works and you make adjustments um so the back and I've had to think about this quite a bit because the dress I saw that I really liked had a big bow at the back. Um, so I want it to be slightly open, maybe not all the way down to here, but slightly open. And um, so there'll be a side panel piece here and here. The back panel piece I'll cut lower um, so that I can attach, and this will be on both sides, but I've just drawn it on one side, these really wide ties and again, I'll play with this a bit to see so that I can tie a really big bow. And initially, I thought that would just tie at the back, but I am worried that it might not, that it might slip. And if the tie opens, then it might start to, um, the top might slip a little bit. The top, the kind of the bodice will become a bit loose. So I'm thinking across here, I'm going to attach um, a piece with elastic inside so it'll be like a channel with elastic just to hold that in place with the tie over the top and then there'll be an invisible zip running down the back um possibly i've put it on this side just to kind of get a feel for how it looks there may be another tier on the skirt so this is kind of going to be like midi length there may be another tier at the bottom kind of a ruffle um but we'll see how much fabric i have and how it looks because it may be better keeping just the detail at the top and once i've got you know get started we'll see how that looks so the next step is to take this <laughs> into a pattern so um i'm going to draft the bodice first because the skirt is easy enough to do once i've got the bodice so we're going to focus on the bodice first um and I'm going to use my basic block that I made previously and adapt it to make this bodice. So I'll show you what I use. So to make the pattern, I'm going to use my blocks. Now I made these blocks in uh, June 2019, <laughs> but I do know that my upper body measurements that I will need for the dress haven't changed that much. So I'm going to use these. Um, but if your measurements change, um, you know, you need to maybe redo your block. Otherwise, you're working with different measurements. So I know from here here up, I haven't changed too much. It's kind of waistline and, and hips that have changed a bit. So these are the blocks for my fitted bodice. And this is the back. And this, this is the front. And these are what I'm going to adapt to make my bodice which will be a, a strapless bodice at first until i attach the straps now these were made using um the winifred aldrich book and this is kind of what i use all the time i have got other pattern cutting books which are really interesting to read other ones but this is kind of what i'm used to using so i um originally drafted these on my city and girls course and um used these instructions here to draft the block so there's lots of kind of videos online about how to draft a draft a block and you'll find the the best way for you i mean if anybody's really interested i can show you how i did that but just i used winifred's the bible um so those i've got ready um and the other things i will use really sharp pencils i usually have a few sharpened so that i could, don't have to keep going and sharpen them but just keeping the pencils really sharp to get my lines really precise uh ruler 
paper scissors and this my pattern master so this is for kind of marking the seams so it's a kind of a graded ruler but also has the curves different shape curves um so you can see it's in centimeters which i prefer to work in um and so i can add my seam allowances with those and then the basic pattern so the first drawing of my bodice i will do on dot and cross because it helps to, with the lines and things and then when i've made the first drawing um i will take another um tracing off it i'll show you a little sample of it i'm going to use this kind of paper something like this which is a little bit easier to see through um so slightly easier but i've actually got some more that's a bit easier to see through so i'll trace it with this and make adjustments on this paper so the first thing to do is to trace off the blocks onto the paper i've taped it down so it doesn't shift and i just want the top part of the bodice this is the waistline and i know that i want my bodice to to use stop at the waistline if i need a little bit extra length or less i can add it but i'm just going to trace this top part off first um and i'll do the same for the front and the back and then i'll show you what i do next so i've traced around the front and the back block and these are essentially kind of the the basis of what we're going to use to create the pattern so we're going to draw some lines onto here and then trace off pieces from these two bits it's a bit of a squeeze on this desk sorry but i will turn it around um so essentially what we're going to do i'm just going to turn around so you can see it sideways a little bit and fit it all in so these are the the darts that are on the block and what we're essentially if we were using the whole bodice we would create one piece adding a bit of curve here and then we'd have another piece down cur curving around here and then those two would join up so we create the princess seam that way but i don't want all of this so the first thing i'm going to do is draw in a line of roughly where my bodice is going to be and then on the back the same so i'll mark in the lines of where the bodice is is going to be on the back because we don't need any of this at the top so before we add the curves of the princess seams i want to think about where i want the bodice to be so we know that it's not going to be up here i want to think about how far down roughly it's going to be so i know where my neckline <clears throat> meets on me so i kind of measure down roughly how far and it can be adjusted once we've made the twirl so i've measured down on here i measure 12 centimeters so this is the height that i wanted to sit on my on my front above my bust um i want it to be straight so i'm going to take the line across straight and then it'll match up here so we're going to have kind of like here and here on the other side and then i'm going to take it down in a curve because i want it to come under that arm so it'll go across down and here so i'm just going to mark those lines in So you can see I've come straight across the front of the bodice and curved down to just under the arm here. And then on the back, I made sure lined up here so that it meets perfectly. And I took it straight across here. And then I started doing my curve here. It's getting a bit muddled. So um, this needs to be where my, so here, there's going to be the tie attached and the elastic so actually the cur the curved bit in the back is going to join from down here so this bit here is going to be quite short so actually it needs to be here so i want my tie to be quite wide and i want this piece down here so i'm thinking that maybe it won't be curved or if it is it's just a slight curve so this is one piece if it doesn't work then I can redraft it. So we've got all the lines here that we can draft from. I'm thinking that maybe it needs to be kind of 
quite quite low down here so that we've got the strap and a little bit of back and then this piece here it may be that I just take it out all together and we finish the top of the waistband here but I'm just I'm going to try it and see and we've got the pieces and we can play around with it so you can see that my pieces my rubber was a little bit dirty don't use a dirty rubber you can see that my pieces are a little bit messy now because I've been tracing out different lines so in order to know which pieces to trace I'm going to use a thicker pen and I'll do this with a ruler and I'm going to go over the pieces that I'm going to trace so just so that I, I trace exactly the right pieces and it'll be easier to see through through the tracing paper and I know I don't trace the wrong lines okay so I'm going to go over those okay. okay and I'll do that all around the pieces and then I can trace off the individual pieces from my bodies now you can just curve these shapes and make a few pieces um but actually and I forgot to do this <laughs> in order to get a nicer shape this is the dart, the original dart. You can move this dart into the shoulder seam. So you essentially move it around here and then create the curve this way. So you get more of a curve here and coming around. So it gives a nicer shape to the bodice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this dart and I'll show you how I do that and then create the lines. So this is the center. Uh, this is the sleeve so if i'm the center of the sleeve and i'm going to take that line to the point here so i'm just draw that up. it doesn't really matter how messy this all gets and you might notice i've used kind of crinkly paper i've been trying to reuse the bits i have and some of it's a bit creased but this is not my passion this is the basis so this works fine so i've got a new line running from the center of the shoulder to the bottom of that bust point um, and what I'm going to do is get my scissors and um, sort of cut up this line just like that cut it to there so we've got a new cut here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dart here that I had and essentially pinch it like this I'm going to fold it like you would imagine if it was actually you were sewing it you close up your dart so just really make sure it's meeting and close up that dart and then I just tape it Reuse a bit of my tape I've already used. And close up that dart. And then you can see that we have a new one here. So it's moved to here. Now what I'll need to do is trace my passion author because obviously I can't draw here now because I've got I've got open desk underneath. So I'm going to put my paper over the top and trace off. The shape adding a bit of curve or taking it away so you'll see where I create the curve to this and a curve on this side so that they meet together because otherwise you'll have two points meeting and you'll have a very pointy bust point Okay, so you can see I've traced out um, the, this is the um, side, front side piece. Um, and I've added just the tiniest bit of curve there and there. So it comes in this way and out this way slightly, just to kind of measure out a tiny bit on each and then curved it out just to create a better curve. And if this isn't right when I fit the twirl, then I can I can adjust it as well. So it's not a problem, but try and get it as close as possible. And then I added one centimeter seam allowance all the way around, and that will be one piece ready to go. 
and always before I take it off in case I get muddled I always write on them what the pieces are so um, I'm calling this uh, my ruffle sundress and this is the front side panel so there'll be a piece in the middle and this is the front side um, and this won't this will be won't be cut on the fold I will cut two so cut two and then very important just where I can find a space make sure there we go I'm gonna do my gray line in there and that's the piece so I'm going to cut that piece out and I'll do the same with all the others okay so I've got all my pieces traced off one of the things I forgot to mention was very importantly putting in notches so I put the notches on the paper the crop dot and cross paper the block and then I add them onto my traced pieces and then I can take them from there but I can also check them so putting them next to each other and checking that they match up so we've got centre front piece which is cut on the fold so I've got my cut on the fold marking and no seam allowance one centimetre all the way round we've got the side panels and we've got next to that the side back and a notch and then this little tiny piece here which will be my centre back and I thought about not having a piece but then I'd still need a waistband of some sort on the top of the gathered skirt so we'll try this for now and we can try out different things and also it'll help me to check the fit of the bodice so the next thing if this fit perfectly the next thing to do would be to trace off the facings that will go on the inside of the bodice and I can trace those from those pieces but what I'm going to do is check the fit because there's no point in make in making this up and make and making the facings up and then finding that this doesn't fit and I have to redo both so we're going to make this up check the fit and then trace off the facings so pieces cut out on the fold uh, you may have noticed if you were eagle-eyed that I had a seam allowance here shouldn't have done because it's got um, a cut on the fold here so I've taken that off so all the pieces are cut out I'm going to join the pieces on the machine um, and then we're going to check out the fit okay so in order to figure out where what shape my facings need to be the front is fairly straightforward but the back is a funny shape so I drew on roughly just to get an idea of the depth and this will be more accurate of where I want my facings to be so the facings will attach here and here um, but it'll come down to here so it'll be along here so once turned in there'll be a facing running along the back just here so it'll attach here here and here and then turn under and it'll enclose this here and then i made some of these these little button band pieces that will go on here so i just kind of made a four by eight centimeter piece maybe cut four of those and those will attach to there so they will be underneath and then when we turn out the facing they will go there and the tie will go over the top so the next step is to trace off the facings so to create the facings i've joined the center front piece and the front side panel and i'm going to trace off this piece at the top and you can see where it joins here within it curves so i'll probably take the facing to about here so that'll go on the inside uh, adding seam allowance here and at the top but not here because it'll be cut on the fold and then the back piece I've joined the bottom and uh, the facing here will go across here and it'll probably curve down to here so I'll have a look at that trace that off and that'll have seam allowance around as well um, and cut so there'll be two pieces a front facing and a back facing so this is the front facing it's traced off the two front pieces and then this is the back facing that will attach down the side into the point where the zip 
come up to the top and I'll cut two of those. So um, to show you how I'm going to create my strap, I am not going to go with the kind of gathered, uh, the elasticated strap that was in the inspiration one, um, but I am going to go with a wider strap. So kind of a quite a chunky strap to cover my bar strap and just be more comfortable. Um, but I think I'd mentioned originally that I was going to use like a C-shaped piece that creates a kind of a, a ruffle that is, it's called a flounce. So it's like a bit softer because you just sew it in straight. But I actually want something a bit more dramatic. So I'm going to create a different shape piece and gather. So there'll be more fullness in the ruffle and it will give that really big ruffle effect, which is what I'm looking for. So I measured my what I think my shoulder strap should be with a little bit extra. So this is 48 centimetres. I'm going to write it on it so that I know when I go to, to adjust it the next time. Um, so we've got 48 centimetres and I did a four centimetre strap because I want quite a nice sturdy strap. Again, I can alter it once I've finished my twirl. Um, so cut four of those and um, two for each side. And then I to create the ruffle, I have taken the length, the 48 centimetres, and added 75%, but then I've halved it because I'm going to cut this on the fold. Now, if you haven't got enough fabric to cut on the fold, you can add a seam allowance and cut two and join them together. I've added a notch here. This is going to be the midway point so that I can add this will be here. So oh, this way as it may be. Um, so I know how much gathering to have on either side. So I'll add a notch here when I cut this as well. So this is my ruffle shape. I've done gone for quite a big one. And again, I can adjust it once I'm finished, but I've just kept it straight and then curved around towards the end. And I might change the shape of that curve a little bit. It looks a little bit angular here, but yeah, so that's gonna go gathered along and then it will taper down to the end of the strap on the front and end of the strap on the back. So the next thing I'll do is I'll cut out these pieces. I'm gonna make up um, two straps. I'll do one with and one without the ruffle so I can see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to attach those to the bodice and then attach my facing and my, if you remember, my button pieces for the back as well. So I'm gonna do all of that because once I've finished my twirl, I'm actually going to do a video on how to put this dress together. So I won't focus on the sewing now, I'm just gonna focus on showing you how to create the pattern. Okay, so trying the bodice on, excuse the bar straps underneath. Um, I'm looking at it, I think, Obviously, the very obvious thing is this gaping here. I've tried the straps at different lengths to adjust, but this is this is fitting quite well. It's not very well pressed here, so not. But this is fitting quite well here. So I'm thinking that I'll take a bit out here. Around the back, because the skirt isn't attached, it's getting a bit caught up at the back there, but um, it's, yeah, fitting okay here. Kind of got the position of, the button this I'm thinking the whole bodice I'm going to lengthen because by the time I take centimeter seam allowance that's really short so I'm going to lengthen this um, probably about three centimeters and um, so that will bring that back piece a bit longer so it won't be so fragile it's kind of a bit wobbly at the back um, so yeah I think about three centimeters I'm going to add to the whole bodice and this I'm going to take out. So I'm going to put a little, take a piece out of the pattern. So I'm going to pin that and then I'll be able to check how much to take out the pattern. So if I pin it once, and this is much easier to do if you've got somebody with you. So I'll try this side. And then I'm putting them in on either side, but I will make sure they're even when I so it's kind of as carefully as I can. Pin. And 
and I will match those up on the pattern. The straps could do with being a fraction shorter, but um, if I flatten those down, that looks how much better fit. It is a bit wobbly as I say at the back, but this is because it's all this is a little bit narrow. Um, pretty happy with that fit. So yeah, a bit more length, and that'll be it. So I marked in on the fabric where the dart was that I took out when I fitted it. Um, and that's creating some shaping. So you can see it's shaping it that way. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I've marked it in on my pattern here, the dart. And I won't recut this part of the pattern because this will actually be a dart when I cut this piece again. So all I need to do is to still add the length, but I'm going to keep that. The one thing I will have to do is recut the facing because this, um, the facing will need to be a little bit shorter. So I need to change that piece of the facing um, to make sure it fits there. So my pattern pieces have been adjusted. So I've added this three centimeters to each bodice piece three centimetres on each one um, and I've re-added that seam allowance that was missing there um, and with this dart here I just I will be closing that up so I was, I've had to readjust my facing piece so what I did was I just laid it over the top traced the shape of the dart closed that piece up now you could retrace all your pieces and when I make this again, I'll probably retrace all the pieces. But for now, these pieces will do. They've been adjusted and they'll work just fine until I'm sure that this is the correct fit. Um, the other thing I had to change was the back facing. I added the three centimetres onto the bottom of that. So it matches this three centimetres here. So that will go with that one. Um, so all the pieces have been adjusted. Uh, I'm going to recut <laughs> and make another bodice. So I've remade the bodice with the new um, pattern and pieces. And that's a little bit pucker, just the stitching. Um, but I'm really happy with the fit on the front. The It's pulling a little bit here and it's just because this needs a little bit extra. So I'm going to add a little bit into the, this back piece here across the back at the top as well it's just here I'm going to add a little bit just to so that's not pulling so much at the back I've added a ruffle to the um to the strap just to see how it looks and I'm pretty happy with that I'm going to there'll be a tiny baby hem on that as well which I didn't add just for the twirl um so the next stage is to twirl the skirt I will probably just do the front and not the full length just to get an idea of the the kind of amount of gathering I want um, so I'm not wasting fabric, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that fit. So the only part of my pattern left is uh, to create some inseam pockets. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to use a pocket from an already existing dress that works. Um, in fact, my plum dress has some lovely inseam pockets, so I might use the pockets from that. Um, so I will use those, cut those um, from my fabric when I'm cutting my other pieces. So uh, one or two things to note, I made the video at different points, as you might have noticed with different outfits and things. Um, but uh, there's a couple of things I need to point out. So one, the pieces this at the back, um, I have on the pattern cut on the fold, which it isn't. And I did add my seam allowance, but I haven't noted that in in the video so I actually noticed that I had done cut on the fold and it should be with the seam allowance so I did add the seam allowance in there um, also my darts so the piece I've taken out on the on the bodice is the right amount at the top but the direction of the darts is not perfect so I will be adjusting those when I make up my dress um, and the only other thing to add is that I need some inseam pockets and I'm going to trace off um, some pockets from a dress that pockets that I already really like. So my lovely 
Coco Wawa plum dress has got lovely inseam pockets so I might use those as a template to add to my dress uh, and the only thing to do now is to cut into this beautiful fabric from the rag shop uh, I will be using my passion to cut my ruffle sundress um, and I hope you'll join me for my next video when I will be showing you how I put my dress together um, and show you how I add those pockets as well but uh, yeah please join me then if it was helpful if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and I'd love any comments about what you found helpful what, what you'd like to know if there's anything that wasn't clear please just pop the comments below and uh, I'll respond really helpful for future videos I hope to do some more drafting videos as well but uh, yeah please join me for my next video